talk about a known ice system, there are several different problems we're trying to protect the airplane from. The first is, obviously, keep the airplane flying, keep the flying surfaces de-iced so you can maintain lift. The second is to keep the airplane free from drag. So we've got to make sure that we don't allow ice to build up in places that create too much drag, overcome the ability of the airplane to produce forward speed. The third, at some level, becomes weight and uh, fuel venting and those kinds of important but less uh, primary issues. Obviously, all of them become essential at some point. If your fuel vents freeze over, you're not going to have an engine running. But let's talk about aerodynamics then to start with. We've got to maintain lift on the airplane. This required a change in all of the existing panels on the airplane, wing, horizontal, and the addition of the vertical stabilizer. The panels were changed to increase their size, to increase the ability for higher flow rates, and importantly, to also be able to be operated over a wider range of angle of attack. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. Now you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navigation. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. We've flown the airplane in actual ice, but but also, to get there, we've flown the airplane with foam put on the airplane. The foam were from shapes generated at the NASA icing tunnels so that we could look at what the drag would, be look, like, would look like with ice remaining. This is not about lift as much as it is about drag and will cause some changes, such as increase in the stall speed because of aerodynamic changes on the airplane, require more power, which is why you'll never see a known ice SR-20. You need the horsepower of the 22. And so some of the, the changes are to, to, to minimize those. So we've increased the protection. Now that's partly why it's on the vertical. We also have to think about controllability, which is again vertical, and importantly some of the control surfaces such as the horizontal stabilizer. You'll notice that the, the horns on the tips of the elevators are now ice protected. Let's take a quick walk around the airplane and look at some of the changes that separate the known ice certification airplane from the non-hazard. One of the first changes you'll notice up front here are these nozzles which spray fluid onto the windshield. Also on the front of the airplane, one of the changes in part of the certification is an ice light. You'll notice here the prism effect which allows the single light to be focused both on the wing and on the horizontal tail. This way a pilot operating the airplane at night can easily inspect the system and see whether or not he's accumulating ice. The panels are also different on the airplane. They're a little bit larger, they've got a different set of holes on them so that we can get enough fluid out at different speeds and weights to make sure we de-ice the airplane. I do want to point out the difference between the fuel cap and the TKS fluid cap. Obviously these are operated by hand, although they can be locked. The TKS fluid tank, though, can only be opened by a key. This is to prevent people from inadvertently fueling the TKS system. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. I mentioned that it was a four-year program. There were a lot of details that took longer than we expected. One of those was the stall indicator. On the normal SR-22, we used a pressure differential. On this one, we've gone back to a more traditional vein, uh, single-piece indicator, but it did have to be electrically heated, which was much more complicated than we expected. A necessary part of known ice certification is ensuring the safety of the fuel system. For our fuel vents, we use a flush NACA inlet to make sure that ice cannot build up on the fuel vent, ensuring proper fuel flow. Of course, in addition to the vertical, we've had a number of other changes on the horizontal. The panel is much larger, putting much more fluid on the tail, obviously main, making sure that we keep this surface flying is essential for safety. Other details include ice protection on the horn of the elevator. This does two things. One is it makes sure that we don't build up too much ice, drag, counterweight kind of effects. But importantly, we have to make sure we don't have ice bridging that would lock it. 
So you have fluid coming out in between the two surfaces. Internally, no nice is available with the Cirrus Perspective system by Garmin. This includes enunciators, volume levels, time remaining on the system, and is controlled through a switch panel, which has just a few changes from the system in the past. These include momentary switches for max flow and for windshield de-ice. Imagine life before comfortable, safe, high-utility general aviation airplanes. For those of us that are airplane lovers, we always had airplanes we could fly, but now we have airplanes we get much more value out of. That continual improvement, high-definition glass for your camera, no nice for the airplane, is going to continue. But this was an important change. This was the, the one next giant leap which allows the airplane to be used more often. We still need to improve the useful load. Airplanes never go fast enough. We need to improve the cruise speed. Airplanes can always be more efficient. Airplanes can always look better. They can have better fit and finish. But all of those are incremental steps. No nice certification on the SR-22 is a monumental change in the utility of the airplane.